What's going on everyone? Welcome back to EWC, Empire Watch Club. I'm sorry, I have not done an EWC vlog in a little while, but I think it's about time. There's a lot of stuff we need to talk about and what better time it is than now. I don't have any watches in front of me today. I will have one later and I will show you guys something, but this is more of a market update and just uh, kind of sharing my thoughts and my views and opinions on what's really going on around the world and in particular, the watch market. I am going to focus more on Rolex, AP, PP, Richard Mill, VC, and you know, whatever is hyped. Uh, I'm not really going to be referring to other watches that are not hyped because the last couple years, the value and the price of those watches were not overextended. You know, they did not climb like this Mount Everest and they didn't peak. So that category of watches, they have not taken a huge hit. You know, they're actually doing okay. I mean, they might have gone down 10%. 15%. But compared to the hype watch market segment, this category, they have taken a huge hit. And if you guys are interested in knowing more about, you know, all the different watch prices, um, you could just kind of do your own research and go on Chrono24 and obviously you will see the price fluctuations, but you know, some dealers are still asking for way high. However, you can see that the range has gotten way bigger, which means that the volatility is there. And it also means that some people just want to get rid of their stock. I also follow Watch Analytics. Their IG is right here. I think they do a great job on analyzing all the watch prices. Um, you know, it's a good indicator. So you can either just kind of do your own research on Chrono24, or you can go to a site or IG page like Watch Analytics and you know, see what's going on. Um, so, like I said, we are going to focus more on the gray market and the secondary market, but I will be talking about the ADs and, you know, what's going on with that a little bit later. So, let's get into this. So, a couple years ago, due to the pandemic, um, you know, and all of the shutdowns and lockdowns, uh, pretty much every government started to print loads and loads of cash. A lot of things, um, especially luxury goods, all the prices got jacked up. Um, you know, no one really thought that inflation would set in, but lo and behold, it did. And we are in a crisis, sort of, I guess. Obviously, the Russian and the Ukraine war affected a lot of things around the world as well. Uh, from oil prices to agriculture, grains, uh, wheat, and also different currencies, gold prices, the stock market, cryptocurrencies. I can go on and on, but basically it was a chain reaction. And now we have seen the watch market go into a steady decline. Where is the bottom? What's going on? Is this a crash? Well, I'm sorry to say, I don't have the answers. I may be wrong, but I don't think we're in a crash. I actually think that we are in a big correction. I think the last year and a half, we were overextended. We were hyperextended, whatever you call it. A lot of the hyped up models, the luxury sports watch sector, it just kept going up and up and up. And right now we are seeing the watch prices of all of the hot and in demand in the luxury sports watch market kind of go down to where it was a year ago or a little bit over a year ago. And I actually think it's a healthy correction. I mean, if you look at the stock market and if you look at cryptocurrencies, when it keeps going up and up, it can't stay there forever. If it goes up, it's gotta come back down. But when it comes back down, you gotta find support somewhere. And I feel like the watch market is in an area or in a zone where we feel like there's some support. But I do want to talk about one thing, perspectives. There's different ways to look at the watch market. I think that there's 
the collectors and the connoisseurs, those people probably won't be affected by this recession or this downturn or this correction, whatever you want to call it. But the gray market dealers, the flippers, they will probably be the ones that are the most affected. They're the ones that have invested heavily in this market and they are always investing because that's a way of business, a way of making money, a way of making profit that they chose. So if they got in at the peak, I mean, a lot of the models are down 15, 20, maybe even up to 30, 35%. They're gonna be stuck with a lot of inventory. So it's very interesting how you look at it. For me, I'm more of a watch collector, watch connoisseur, and I appreciate watches and I like to wear my watches. And because of this correction, it gave me a chance to go into depth and look at some watches that I've always dreamed of owning. Um, but because I got sucked into the hype, I just kind of overlooked some models. If you felt the last two years, all of the watch prices were kind of crazy, it's, it might be a good time to go in. I am not able to time the bottom and I can't tell you guys when the best time is to buy a watch. But with this correction, there are bargains out there. There are dealers, there are flippers in the gray market that are stuck with a lot of inventory. You might be able to get some steals. I bought a watch last week. I was looking for a yellow gold black dial sports watch that I could wear as a daily. Maybe because some of these watches that I bought, you know, four, five, six years ago that I don't ever want to sell. I just want to hold on to them and collect them and wear them once in a while. Um, but they've appreciated so much that I feel bad because I go out, I'm a casual person, I'm an athletic person. I bang up my watches. And that's why I was looking for a yellow gold black dial sports watch. And one in particular that I found was this. Well, it's inside this box. And before we get to the watch, I just wanted to show you guys this really cool carbon fiber forged watch box. This is made by WB Sense. I actually think it's pretty cool. If you have a Lamborghini, you know, Huracan Performante, you'll probably see this type of carbon fiber on the interior and the exterior. And I actually think it looks good just on the table itself. You know, it's just like a cool looking box, black stealth looking and it's lightweight. And it's very sturdy because it's carbon fiber. You know, for guys that like cars, you know, guys at EMC, this is the perfect combination. EWC and EMC. So I actually think WB Sense, if you guys are watching, we should link up together and collab and make a EMC or EWC carbon fiber watch box. What do you guys think? Comment below, let us know if we should make carbon fiber boxes. But right now I have this one watch that I want to show you guys, which is a yellow gold Rolex Daytona with a black dial and diamond markers. So before I get into this watch, I just want to finish talking about this WB Sense box. This is genuine leather, um, so no matter what size your wrist is and what size your watch is, it will fit and the cushion inside is very, very soft and the leather is very supple, so it looks quite nice. I will definitely be keeping a couple watches in here um, and I actually think the size is really good for traveling. So if you guys want to know more about WB watch boxes, their link is down below. You can go on their website for more info, give them a holla. Now let's get back into what I got. So this is a yellow gold Rolex Daytona black dial with eight diamond markers. It's the reference 116528. This was discontinued a couple years ago. Um, and I actually like this a little more than the 2021 new model. The 2021 new model is still a black dial with the eight diamond markers, but the sub dials are actually solid gold colored rings, um, which makes it look more like the Zenith dials from 1988 to 2000. Uh, I really like that dial, but 
I was actually just, you know, looking for a black dial that I could wear because it's it, it matches everything that I wear. Okay, so the end of last year, this watch was approaching 2 million NTD. And in the beginning of this year, from let's say January to end of February or March, it got upwards of 2.1, 2.2 million asking price. Now you're gonna ask me how much did I get it for? Well, I got it for about 1.6. I know that's still a lot of money, but if you think about it, at a peak of maybe 2.2 million asking price to about 1.6, that's a price difference of 600K. And if you calculate that by percentage, that's almost 27, 28% to 30% off. That's not bad. Um, and even if it does go down a little more, I'm not worried. Why? Because I'm not in it to make money on this watch. I just bought it because I really like it. I'm gonna wear it a lot. And this is probably gonna be my daily watch. And I'm not looking to make money from this watch. I'm not trying to flip it at $2.2 million, even if I got it down to 2 million NTD or 1.9, I just thought that it was overpriced. So like I said before, right now is a very, very interesting time because a lot of these hyped up watches are going through a very big correction. So now let's talk about the ADs. Um, I think it's very interesting because before, you know, the last couple of years, we've had to pair watches. We've had to just bend over and just get raped and just do what they want to get the watches that we want. And you had to overspend. You had to get things that you didn't like. But times have changed. Things are softening up. And just like the secondary market, I feel like if you have a good rapport with your AD, it's a good time to bargain because they're also stuck with a lot of inventory. If you have the opportunity and if you have the funding and it doesn't stress you out with life, you know, work, family, um, and you're able to spend, I think that it might be a good time to negotiate and see what you can get. Every AD will operate and manage their own business, their own way. So it might not be a bad time to go around and get to know more ADs. So everyone, just be careful out there. And if you are getting a watch, love it, wear it, be happy with it, be proud of it. Hopefully, EWC will have a little watch get together, a watch meet. That would be really fun and cool for everyone. I'm sure it's gonna be geeky, but I'd love to see you all there. Look out for that info soon to come. Just want to give a big shout out to WB Sense. Thank you guys. You guys are awesome. And thank you all for watching EWC. Keep supporting us. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.